Hello, we are Everfrost. Hey! In summer mode. Here, Linda. started when I moved to Finland from Australia and I wanted to make a band and had a friend called Markus who lived in Lahti and I had other friends so I was basically putting an album together uh, called Blood Emotion which was the first Everfrost album and uh, I needed a guitarist so you know I, I knew like Maka could play really well and I was like hey I need someone to do guitar solos for the album would you like to join and he joined and at the time we had a different vocalist we had Hugh Wagner who I knew from uh, Adelaide and uh, he was recording all of the vocals for the album and we were doing it like cross country and everything. And um, once that album was done, we were like, okay, like we want to actually make a band like this and play live. So why well, not change a bit after that? Yeah, it's not a, it, that's right. It started to change because because Hugh wasn't going to move to Finland. So we looked for a new vocalist and I, I met Mikhail. And then we also found uh, Alan on bass and Joppe on the drums at some point. So. Once that was together, we started rehearsing, and that, that basically became the band it is today. Yeah. And it was interesting because I live in Lapland, in the north, but um, everyone else that I found happened to be in Helsinki or near Helsinki. So the, the, the band stuff is actually happening, happening here in Helsinki, and I travel from Lapland. But the albums are put together mainly in, in Lapland yeah. still. So I live in Kevinmaa, which is uh, like on the west, west border near Sweden, in, in Lapland. And yeah, it's, um, well, yeah, you, like you saw it recently. When you yeah, yeah, you yeah. came to visit me, and it's, uh, we, we live there. There's like a lot of forests, a lot of graveyards, and a lot of uh, the winters are very intense. So I think that really influences the music, and I find I can write really easily there. Music, mm. so well, everyone think. puts their personality in their playing. And yeah, I work a bit on the vocal arrangements and the harmonies with Benji together. Yeah. So I'm a big, big fan of like bands like Queen and Blind Guardian who do this crazy vocal arrangement. So it really gave me the outlet to like kind of do. Whatever. Yeah, basically the vocals were just very small, uh, like melody ideas, and then basically you, you took them and built built a garden around them. And oh, that's very nice yeah. to say. Yeah. Winter garden. Winter garden. But we did it, but we actually maintained the garden together. That's right. And also Benjamin uh, watch you know like live performances of you know, like other bands a lot you know, like together, so that we can you know, like uh, also build our own type of you know, like unique stage appearance that's right yeah. band. and we talk a lot about you know, like all kinds of different stuff to do yeah. and look oh, who's here oh, who's here straight oh. from London <laughs> come and say hello to the people Lofty <laughs> the rock city say hey hello, hello. 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 hey welcome to Helsinki Helsinki our guitarist just arrived Mr. Pucky Pals Mr. Pucky Pals so he's in a Puku Pussy yeah Okay, now we can have a cut. Yeah, I think so. Cut! Let's make the most of the night like we're drunk! First album was the thing that like made it possible to realize what we had to do to make a better album and like uh, to realize the actual goals of the first album. But we've never done like we've never had any real kind of like influence or uh, ideal or something to follow with combining you know things like anime and manga with with metal music or in, in, in like a concept album form. So learning from mistakes of the first album, what worked, what didn't work. We decided to do things differently with the second album, for example, having a more coherent manga thing happening. And also with the sound, once you, once you made the first album, you just realized 
this could be better, this could be better, we need to be like this. And as a producer and um, as a mix engineer, I think I could develop as well over that time. So. Oh yeah. yeah. You wanted a more, more cohesive story? Like, uh, it was harder to follow the first one. Yeah, it's not cryptic. so cryptic. Like, still having that dent in there. Of course, with the new one, there are still some things in there that are a bit left a bit cryptic. Oh, yeah, yeah. You interpret yeah. things, but yeah, it's... Uh, but it's not only that. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing, one, that's right, yeah. And yeah. one thing I have to mention, actually, is that throughout the making of the album, musically, the whole time, these guys were saying, like, hey, make, I want a song with this. I was yeah, always yeah. one of them. <laughs> yeah, we wanted an Elro Nostra a lot of the songs. Yeah, Elro Nostra, a key change, modulation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have you know, like a really epic long song, like 15 minutes long or something. We, we actually, the good thing is, I think we talk, we talked a lot about what kind of songs do we want to have on the album. Yeah, yeah, and like, and, and it was a very, I think it was more planned process maybe than yeah. Blue Eye was. Oh, defi you. definitely, yeah. It was mo much more focused. From the first album, it was like a big step like, forward mm. with the guitar sound. Yeah, we, we both agreed it needed to be better, and uh, also the bass sound too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had Arthur had a big with that bass sound. Yeah. With the bass sound, really, yeah. We had a bass Deliberate, producer. Yeah. yeah. Deliberate process of designing the sound. Yeah. It was really helpful. Yeah, that's right. Like Arthur said, only the bestest of pedals. The bestest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One big thing is like um, learning when you have a lot of elements going on, how to how to make it work all together and I think like one of the biggest things I'm learning and probably what's going to change even with the third album is less is more and it's kind of funny yeah. how I say that now with the album like Winter out here but yeah yeah it's um you just learn these things as you go along what works if, if you if sometimes it can sound you know much more grand and big if you, if you pull things yeah. away but that's actually utilized a lot in Winter Rider like there's parts of the songs which are very minimalistic there's no like kind of I want a more dynamic sound. No, no color rhythms, no harmony. It's just like hard hitting riff. Yeah, and that's the main thing. Like chain lays come to mind. The riff, like but then at times it can get really grand, like yeah. whispering across the tail. When it has, when it needs to in the story. So. That's right. At the end of the first album, uh, the characters manage to save their friend from the cursed tower, and they return. And what happens with this story is it's actually set maybe you know two or so years after what happened then, because they went back to school, they graduated, and they met some new friends. But then what happened was uh, Endless Winter hit the town where they lived and the town started to run out of food and supplies and everything was going mad in the town basically and dangerous because things like cannibalism and horrible things started happening so they decided to leave the town with their friends. <laughs> they, decided to, <laughs> they decided to leave the town with their friends and go to one of the characters' summer cottages on, on the lakeside because there was more food there and everything was going to be more safe so they go there and then basically the album is about them surviving and coping with the cold and the, the uh, possibility of death it's it's about it's about enjoying life yeah. even though it's sad even though it's a sad yeah. story it's about fairy tale and living while you can and living while you're alive and you know even if things are horrible going around you because you know things things aren't you know sunshine and rainbows in the world but carpet and metal yeah. Carpe <laughs> diem. <laughs> the biggest struggle. Production probably. Like just yeah. realizing the ideas. Yeah. Making them as tight as so that everything works. Because it, it is quite, quite complex music. So yeah. So uh, if, if anything is a bit sloppy or not mixed the right way, it's gonna kind of fall apart. So that's why it took a long time. Also. A lot of um, feedback throwing between things and seeing like what needs to be improved and uh, talking about just the direction of things but also some of the songs really tested us as musicians oh, yeah. and tested me as well, as a mix engineer because but for example when we and started also tested your computer oh yeah it's <laughs> yeah. It, it, it really did my computer was roasted right. his computer yeah it's, but he broke your computer right? it's I, I can't i can't mix big things on it at the moment it just yeah, can't do it, it it broke down it can't play it can't play the mix files anymore it's just heavy melodic music with a lot of with a lot of um, from different genres. Japanese music meets Turmion Kattilat and Rammstein meets Nightwish and Boats on the Dark. If you were to take one element that's kind of used throughout the whole thing, there's a lot of wintry elements in the music too, I think. For example, yeah. there's a lot of sleigh bells and church bells and um, you know seasonal instruments of Christmas. So there's a bit of a Christmassy sound too. 
Let's yeah. see if that's in the future. We might have yeah. some summer Yeah, it might songs. change. It might change, yeah. you know. Beach party. Well, yeah, or it might fun. might get really dark. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Do dark metal album. Yeah, or if, I don't know. But I mean, it's still heavy. The whole idea is, you know, you can you can be influenced by different things and you know experiment. But it's it's heavy metal music. It should be it heavy. heavy. It should metal. be powerful. It should yeah. be something that it's gonna be it's gonna get you out of the bed. Yeah, like we are doing something fresh, but still like. Related. Rooted in yeah, yeah, that's, right, that's yeah. right. sacred traditions. Of and them, I think we definitely have like our own, own signature sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. like from, from all elements of yeah. playing. Yeah. You know. And like I think many can agree that uh, Everfrost is power metal or melodic metal, but you can still, you know, like if you listen to Sonata Arctica and us, you can carry on. Like, I hate to choose just one song, but. I would say like Randy and Andy Freeze. Why? Like when you listen it, you, it's like the feeling. Like mm. it's always about the feeling. Like you get like a good mood and there's something good. Of course, it has great melodies, catchy melodies. It's enough simple to get like familiar with it, to catch on to it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And like overall, it's a it's a tight set of good music. Yeah. And like I I think. That's enough, like to for it to be yeah. for it to be the best song in my opinion. Of course, I could say other songs too, but like if just one, it would be the Friday and yeah. I think I think it shows we all like that song. Mm. <laughs> just yeah. check it out. Yeah, this is the Brandy and Antifreeze. Genre doesn't matter as long as you enjoy the music. <laughs>